welcome to Truth Talks. Once again, we're talking about the war on children uh, with Diana Swain, our children's ministry leader, and we're going to talk about some uh, very serious topics today and uh, the, the uh, attack that's happening with children. Can you pray? Yes. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for the opportunity that you give us to teach children and to um, just let them know about you and tell them the truth. Lord, I just pray for any parents or any grandparents or any anybody who is around children um, that they would really take to heart what we say today about all of the attacks that are coming on, uh, on children, Lord. And we just pray for protection over children um, in our church and our families that are listening. Um, we just pray for protection over them and that they would hear the truth. And we just thank you for um, giving us the words to say today, Lord, and we just trust in you, in Jesus' name, amen. amen. So I just wanna start out talking about how the devil hates people in general, mm -hmm. but the devil really hates children. And there is an all out war on children and an attack on them to destroy them. Mm -hmm. And it really starts with abortion. Yes. And that, uh, you know, Satan wants to eliminate the life of a child, destroy the life of a child before they even have a chance to be born. And there is going on in the school systems, going on in, with counselors, different people, um, where if a girl wants to get an abortion, where they'll keep that secret. Mm -hmm. And I find that incredibly uh, hard to fathom when children have to get permission to do, you know, anything. Like, right. from, like if your child's going on a field trip at school, they have to get a permission to go on the field trip. And that this is happening with um, young girls and it's, it's very, very sad. And the, the impact on their life is forever. Right. That's not something that's going to be uh, a one thing that happens and then they're okay the rest of their life. It's going to be a defining moment forever in their life. And another thing I wanna talk about um, is the drag queen story hours. Have you seen very much on that? I've uh, heard some things on the radio about yeah. it. And, yeah. Yeah. I've seen some things on like Twitter about that mm -hmm. and uh, some things that law, um, not law, but uh, different representatives and people are in different states passing laws against it. Yes. And, you know, my thought with that is, uh, where are the parents' minds that are taking their children to these things? Mm -hmm. But also, what is the agenda behind it? Why would somebody who is a drag queen want to perform in front of children? Mm -hmm. Do you have any? Um, I think there again, it's satanic, mm -hmm. and Satan wants to get the children any way he can. Yeah. You know, he, if he can't destroy them, when they're infants or before, um, then he'll try to steal their minds when they mm -hmm. get older. I saw, a, it was a very disturbing video clip. It was a young girl, I think she, I don't know, maybe five or six, and uh, was at a drag queen performance where they were dancing for money and getting you know dollars get handed to them. And sadly, the room seemed to be filled with mostly women who had their children with them. Uh, male children and female children and so this little girl gets up and she starts dancing like a you know a stripper would dance like imitating the drag queen uh, because she wants to get money mm -hmm. and they're all laughing and they're applauding and they all start giving her money and she dances even more and it's like I saw that and it just really made me want to cry because it's like here you're taking an innocent child, teaching them sexuality, uh, exploitation of, of mm -hmm. them. And they're you know laughing and cheering this on. And um, once again, that child is gonna be affected by that. Right. And that's not gonna go away. And 
we're all very aware of this, the whole gender ideology that's mm -hmm. going on. And that is an all out attack on children to destroy them before they even reach an age where they are able to reproduce. So once again, the devil trying to stop the birth of people, stop that where mm -hmm. their lives get destroyed, their bodies get mutilated, and uh, they're no, they're, they will never be a mother or father, never be able to reproduce because mm -hmm. th this has happened to them. And it raises a whole lot of other issues in like the school systems um, where you have children who are saying they are a different gender than what they truly are raises a lot of issues. Mm -hmm. Any? No, I can't really speak okay. to that. Okay. <laughs> so, I mean, and I've seen a lot, a lot of things about that. There's, and I'm sure you all have too, watching this, uh, restroom issues where you have safety issues with children, where uh, the there might be a boy that says they're a girl and they're allowed in the restroom with girls. An issue with that, sports. Um, we've seen sport issues in even college level, even above level, where there are women who are getting seriously injured um, because a man who says they're a woman is competing against these women and physically they're getting hurt. and that's an even greater risk for children mm -hmm. because their bodies are already smaller and less developed and you know you have a, a a girl and if a let's say wrestling and a boy that says he's a girl goes into the wrestling she's going to get hurt very mm -hmm. hurt and the all of the pronoun stuff that's going on kids are very confused i mean kids are confused mm -hmm. and you know when they're out there and they they are um, exposed to all of this, and then they come to church, and they're here in the Sunday school classroom. Um, we're teaching them the Word of God. We're yes. teaching them the truth. Okay. And that is complete opposite to what the world is teaching them and what they're hearing. And I, I don't know, have you seen like a confusion in children? Like, um, you know, they're, the children here, I do not. I mm -hmm. mean, they, um, you know, we're teaching them the Word of God and they accept that. Mm -hmm. um, I am a public school teacher and there are children that are definitely confused in that setting. Mm -hmm. And we've seen, I know we've seen here at the church before in the past, um, particularly uh, youth age, yeah. children who are a little bit older, they're still children, but they're youth age. Um, coming in, maybe bringing a, a friend or something with them, and the conversation turns to trans or homosexuality, and this this child is never been exposed to church, and it's a complete shock to them mm -hmm. um, to hear the truth, and it, mm -hmm. it's sometimes very hard for them to understand that because all they've ever heard is a lie. Mm -hmm. They've only heard that, and the other big impact which is once again death destruction of children so you have abortion you have the um, gender change things that uh, mutilate their body so that they can never reproduce so that that once again the, the birth of a child is stopped and then you have all of this confusion and they, ends in suicide suicides sometimes. yeah they used to call it dysphoria they called it gender dysphoria and you know now you have children who are so confused and if they've never heard the truth, they're going to be even more confused. And, um, you know, you can only imagine if a child, you know, is born a boy, let's say, and they're told that, you know, well, you can, you can be a girl if you want to be a girl. And all you have to do is put on a dress and now we're going to give you some drugs and now we're going to do some surgery or whatever to go through that and then a little bit later realize that's not what they wanted to do and now it's not reversible mm -mm. or it's only partially reversible and many of them and we've done uh, studies on this on other Truth Talk episodes where they become suicidal mm -hmm. because their life has been so um, 
torn apart mm -hmm. and and they're just so mixed up. Well, they're mixed up because there there's an emptiness that can only be filled by Jesus. Mm -hmm. And so once again, the end result is death. So mm -hmm. um, the Bible says that Satan comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. And it's, it's an old plan. His plan hasn't changed. Right. He tries some different tactics, but there's nothing new. He just packages them differently. He packages Calls the them same. something new, and it's the yes. same thing. Yeah. But the end result that we see is... Um, stopping birth, stopping reproduction, stopping what God put into place that Adam and Eve were to multiply. You know, mm -hmm. you, you multiply the earth. And Satan hates mankind so much because we're made in God's image. He wants to stop that whatever way is possible. And a huge uh, casualty on the battlefield is children mm -hmm. because they're, they're innocent vulnerable. and vulnerable. And sadly, their parents are not protecting them. Well, the parents don't realize, I don't mm -hmm. think, that this battle is going on. Yeah. And, um, you know, Satan is, he's got all of his guns blazing. And right. the parents are just like, oh, this is good, yeah. you know. And, I mean, I think as Christians, especially in America, we've kind of had it easy. Mm -hmm. And, you know... Christians in other countries don't have it so easy, and they have to really stand up for their faith um, because of persecution and things like that. And here, yeah. it's been too easy for Christians, and they haven't taken it seriously. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, another big issue that children are facing and is being taught to children in uh, schools, universities, children, young adults, is critical race theory and racism. Um, we, we just did an amazing Bible study and uh, on answers in Genesis on race and how there really is no race. Mm -hmm. We are all, we're, we're all Adam's race. We all came from Adam and Eve. And I know that you started teaching the children yes. uh, from answers in Genesis. Yes, at the same time. And I didn't even know that yeah. we were doing that as a Bible study. Yeah. Yes. And, you know, teaching them about uh, where we came from mm -hmm. and, and how we're all related and you don't treat somebody differently because of the color of their mm -hmm. skin or because they look different than you or their hair is different than you. And the steal, kill, destroy method of Satan has come into um, schools, universities, workplaces as diversity, equity, inclusion, which is veiled. Um, critical race theory and is trying to separate children, mm -hmm. separate them. Um, actually, I have heard of universities where um, there's actually classes and I've heard of high schools as well in the United States where this is a class just for, you know, black children can only go to this class. Um, like it's a like it's a privilege or something, but it's separating. It's segregation. It's mm -hmm. separating, and it's wrong, and division. It division, and it causes fear. Mm -hmm. It causes hate. It causes distrust, and ultimately violence. Mm -hmm. Violence happens from that. And I heard of a um, actually here in Ohio, of a um, school that was teaching. Um, CRT, critical race theory. Um, they had this, I believe he was a superintendent, was on our local news um, months ago. And uh, it's not legal to teach it here. And he said, well, they disguised it as DEI, diversity, equity, inclu and inclusion. And they all kind of thought that was funny, like, ha, 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 we slipped this in here. And it's like, it is it's destroying, it's destruction, it's tearing apart. And as parents, grandparents, aunts, uncles, um, family members, friends, neighbors, cousins, it's really important that any uh, impact that you can have on a child's life that you know, mm -hmm. that you are teaching Jesus to them, that you're being Jesus to them. Praying for them. Praying for them. And you know, uh, I know that you've probably seen this with children in Sunday school. There's a difference 
children who their parents are in church and their parents are an example mm -hmm. versus children who come from a home where there isn't that example at home. Right. Yeah, definitely. Um, and the children that are raised in church, they, mm -hmm. you know, they, you know, they know the basics and the ones who, who aren't, they, they, you know, everything is new and yeah. they're like, wow, I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's, it's, and they are, you know, they're, they're so hungry. Yeah. And, um, to, to be Pastor Tom for a second, I'm going to pound on the table. <laughs> and just to say this, um, be Jesus at home. Yes. I mean, you, uh, as Christian parents, your kids are watching you. Mm -hmm. And we talked about that last week. I do, you watch. That's the very first thing that happens. Mm -hmm. Your children can hear the truth. They can be taught about the love of Jesus. They can be taught, uh, you know, right from wrong, all of that stuff. And then they can come home and you are not behaving Christ-like and they're going to copy you. Right. They're going to imitate you. The children imitate their parents mm -hmm. yeah. and they're going to do that. And it is so important that um, you think about that when you are, um, w when you're with your children every moment. Um, don't, don't expect them to uh, know how to praise and worship when you come to church with them and you're not praising and worshiping. Mm -hmm. You're, you know, on your phone or doing something like that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, don't expect them to know how to pray about something when they never hear you pray as right. a parent. Right. Don't expect them to, to live for Christ if you don't come to church with them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it is. I mean, they may, but it's a lot harder. It's a lot harder. It definitely is. But, you know, children are innocent and they are so um, moldable. I, I was say, I'm trying to think, yeah. I was thinking malleable, but yeah, they're yeah. so moldable. They're, and they're just ready to be formed into what God wants them mm -hmm. to be. But the devil's out there working overtime. Trying to push him into his mold. Trying to mold children into uh, destruction. Mm -hmm. the, just the end result is to destroy them. And like I said, we really believe here that the children's ministry is critical. Mm -hmm. And it's as important as the adult ministry. Yes. Um, potentially more important than the adult <laughs> ministry because it, it is... Uh, it's the foundation. It's their foundation, right? right. And children can be example to their parents they as well. Be. They, they can... Um, kids will speak the truth. They will uh, call you out sometimes. Kids will, mm -hmm. you know, I, I, have, I have been in front of a parent before where they lied about something. And the kid's like, that's not true. We didn't go anywhere. We, we <laughs> didn't have, you know, the parent's like mortified because they, you know, they, they lied and the kid just, you know, speaks it out. Mm -hmm. And they, that innocence is there and that, uh, you know, boldness just to speak the truth is there when they know the truth and they're just ready to speak it out. I remember when I was a kid, um, my uh, mom had a neighbor that came over and she had a, she put a dress on, a new dress that she had, and she said, oh, what do you think of my dress? And my mom was like, oh, it's, it's nice. And I was like six or seven, I don't remember for sure my age, I don't really remember the dress, I remember the lesson that I learned, but <laughs> um, my mom uh, was looking at me and the neighbor said, what do you think of my dress? And I said, I think it's ugly, you know? <laughs> and you know, the neighbor was like, oh, and I'm like, I, I don't like it. And she said, well, what, do I look bad in it? And I said, you look fat in it. Um, <laughs> and it, it wasn't, she did not look fat. She was a very thin person, but I didn't understand what a woman's body was supposed to look like. I was a child, um, curves and all of that stuff and, and the places where they're supposed to be. And uh, afterwards, my mom talked to me about that. And she told me, um, you know, you speak the truth, but you speak the truth in love. And if you didn't really have anything nice to say about it, 
then maybe you could have just said, if you liked the color, you could have said, well, it's a nice color or whatever. And I said, well, I didn't like the color either. I just <laughs> I remember. And so my mom was like, you should have just been quiet about it. But all of that to say that children will blurt, they'll just blurt stuff out, you mm -hmm. know. Mm -hmm. And if you are um, teaching them the right things, the truth will come out. If you're living differently at home, a, a life, uh, a non-Christian lifestyle at home, um, maybe language that's coming out, they will blurt it out. It will, it will come out. Mm -hmm. And it is vital that you live, um, you live a Christ-like life in front of your children because they are watching. Right. Yeah. So, have anything to add with that? Mm, no, not really. <laughs> okay. You said it. <laughs> Great. All right. Well, um, thanks for watching. Um, go out there and subscribe if you haven't already. And click the little notification bell so that you get a notice every time we have a new video coming out. And thank you for watching.